Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to the always informative, always entertaining, the Boxing Authorities. Joining me at the desk, as always, Mr. Luther Dupree, Jr., Mr. Smokin' Jim Frazier, and my name is Claudio Relsano. Years ago, Tina Turner sang a song called Simply the Best. Well, we have a guy on that's been on our show before, and he's simply the best, inside the ring and out. <laughs> a former friend of mine, a former friend of mine, Mr. Jerry Cooney. Jerry, what's going hey. on? <laughs> hey, I'm just fine that we, we made this work. Thank God for my wife. That's right. Thank you, I'm Mrs. Cooney. I'm still a cave, man. I'm still a cave. All right. We're, we're, we're glad you're on, and thank you to Mrs. Cooney for yes, setting it up. thank you. And she can be a guest on next time. Right, right. <laughs> there you go, man. All right. Well, nice to be with you guys. Everything is great. I just uh, was just uh, um, talking to somebody about life today and about how, you know, sometimes we get health scares, and sometimes when that happens, you kind of like, I was like Superman. I could do anything. And then the doctor tells you, you got a health scare. It's like, what? And then you realize that this is a part of life. And now we have to get on with our life and live the fullest. And that's uh, what I've always wanted to do. And that's what I do today. You know what I mean? Well, you look great, thank God, and, and, and keep at it. And uh, we Excuse, want me? Excuse me? Excuse me? And I say, you look great. And, oh, thanks. Uh, I just want to hear it again. No, you, look great. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to hear it again. We're, we're going to jump around. we got a bunch of great boxing questions for you. Anything the first you one i got to ask you. And Smoking and Jim, and Luther and I disagree with him. Smoke and Jim said that the female division was was better years ago than it is now. Where Luther and I think it's much better today, more deeper, and they fight better. It's getting more attention. Your thoughts on the women's division today, Luther? I'm so sorry, but I can't agree with you. <laughs> I'm just telling you, it used to be female boxing used to be a sideshow. Right. When people would watch two girls, they couldn't really fight. Today, you got Clarissa Shields. You got so many. There's this new girl coming around now. It's just such a great depth. Listen, let me tell you something, okay? They are putting uh, women on the main event in Madison Square Garden and Katie Taylor and the man that's around. What a fight they did. Yes. I felt like I was watching Joe Frazier, Muhammad Ali. And you got Clarissa Shields, who the talent pool is developing to give her some more challenges, but she's still just too far above everybody else. But listen... But female boxing is here to stay. Do I think it's going to go from two to three minutes? I don't think it should because they can't compete with the man, no offense, in that level. But for two minutes, they can punch, 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 punch. You make it three minutes, they start to get tired and worn out earlier. But maybe sometime down the road. But female boxing is great. Great. All right. Jim, your response to that? No. <laughs> so you on our side, finally, Smokey Jim? No we have no a legend comment. who agrees with us. Luth? Listen, one fight I'm excited about is David Benavitez yes. versus yes. Uh, Caleb Plant. Caleb yes. Plant is a big talker. Now he just bought David Benavitez's website with his name on there. How do you yeah. think this fight is going to go? I think the Mexican monster is going to be too much uh, for Caleb Plant. Caleb Plant's one of my favorites, but I just think uh, David Benavitez, his power, his activity – is going to be too much. How do you see that fight going? And what do you think about Caleb's plants, uh, his, his actions leading up to this fight? You know, listen, he's trying to fit in. You know, Benavides is a guy that is a big talker. He's a good, and he backs it up. And, right. You know, he was a, a, a big heavy guy, lost a lot of weight. He doesn't stop throwing punches. He gets stronger as the fight goes on. Caleb Plant is not going to be able to put up with that. Now, in Caleb Plant's last fight, he got a sensational knockout. Oh, that was amazing, yeah. But, but unfortunately, the guy he knocked out had a lot of wear and tear on him. And what happens to us is once the ball joints go or the shock absorbers go in a car, they can change them. But in our bodies, they can't. And, and um, who's the guy he fought? Uh, uh, Darrell. Darrell, who was a great fighter in his day. Right. But he kind of got worn out, became old. And he got caught with a shot. And it was a sensational knockout for Caleb Plant. But he ain't going to run that by uh, David Benavidez. Now, now Caleb Benavidez. Plant, with, with his new trainer, Brad, man, I mean, it seems like he's sitting down on his punches more. And he's really confident. I mean, I think it's going to be a great fight. But I think later on, I think Benavidez gets him. Uh, I just think you know, he's you too and strong. Me, you and me think alike, bro. I think it's – he's uh, – 
he's a great fighter, the champion, right? And but he's in there with a beast, yeah, who's not going to be denied, and he's going to break him down. And you're going to see the look in um, Caleb Plant, or Caleb Vic. Plant's eyes. Mm -hmm. And when you're in the corner, you're fighting somebody. You look at his eyes, and you can see the hope and the excitement. And then by round four, you realize, look at the look in their eyes now. It's like, oh, oh this guy's not <laughs> slowing down. <laughs> right. and, and that's, and, and Caleb Plant needs that to control the pace. He needs to control the action. He's not going to be able to do that with David Benavides. Unless, like you said, he's sitting down so well, and he can catch him. But no one's ever hurt Benavides. Nobody. Right. Right. And sure. I would love to see Benavidez fight uh, Canelo Alvarez. Oh, yes. I've been calling for that fight, but I don't think Canelo will ever fight him, unfortunately. I, who knows? I mean, obviously, you know, we hope for that as boxing fans. And it's a great fight. And uh, and so they're talking about Bavall and Canelo again. Now, nah, it's going to be the same story, if not worse. Right. right. I think around. I think Bivol might be might go for the knockout this time. I think Bivol... Uh, and I'm a very big, very big uh, Arthur Bedabia fan. I think Bavol is too much for him. Ooh. Now, not not that I've had enough time to look it over, but uh, you know, Arthur Bedabia is a slow starter. True. He follows you around. He punches. He lands those shots. But Bavol is the perfect fighter defensively, offensively. He's patient. He throws combinations, and that's going to give uh, Arthur Bedabia trouble. I did, speaking of that fight, I don't know if Bivol will be able to take that body work. Um, you know, he's going to have to have that jab popping, but uh, Arthur, he really goes to the body heart and breaks you down. What he did to Yard when he was hurt, yeah. that, that was impressive to me. Um, yeah, but in his last fight, he looked lackluster. And and listen, Bivol, when he fought uh, Canelo Alvarez, although he's not Benavi uh, Arthur Benaviev, he said, listen, my elbows are hurting. Right. But my head is fine. Right, right. It's got such defense and smart true. and so smart combination. Listen, obviously, it's too early for me, the guys, to really break the fight down. There's so much other things going on in the game, but that's going to be a great one. I hope I get a chance to come on with you guys to Ooh, break that okay. down when well, I'm I hope we get a little it. more familiar. You can it. come on anytime, maybe. But <laughs> now, besides, <laughs> besides Wilder, who else do you think is the biggest threat to Fury and Usyk? And we'll get to the Usyk uh, Fury or Fury fight later. But besides Wilder, who else is the biggest threat in the heavyweight division? Listen, Wilder, we've not seen. I mean, we saw him in the last fight, but the guy he fought was really uh, the guy from Norway. Yeah. There's not much Hilanius to talk about. Wasn't on his level. Right. Robert no, nah, he was old. He waited around so long, so long. He wasn't the same, but. You know, and listen, Wilder hit him with half a right hand and put him to sleep. But it's hard for him. Like, I, when he first fought Fury, I thought, well, Wilder's got to catch him once. I mean, listen, I'm a puncher, right? I will touch you. I am going to touch you with my body shot, and I'm going to hit you on the head. I got to do it. You know, uh, Wilder couldn't do it. And so he's got a new trainer now. We see him make a lot of adjustments in the last fight with Fury. He looked better, even though he lost. But can he get to, I think, a great fight for Deontay Wilder is Anthony Joshua. Ooh. I think that's a great, great opponent for him. Or, listen, let's talk about Joe Joyce. Joe and, Joyce. And Wilder, who's really made a lot of adjustments and changes. He's much more flexible. His endurance never slows down. He never gets tired. We saw that in his last fight against that Australian, Joseph Parker, who's a great fighter. So, I mean, there's a lot of great matchups out there. You know, uh, Fury and Usyk, how is Usyk going to get to Fury? I don't know. But he's got Lomachenko's father as a trainer. And if anybody can do it, he can do it. But uh, obviously, that being said, we saw, when I saw um, um, uh, Fury dismantle Klitschko, when Klitschko was a little bit older, but he was, didn't have a lot of wear and tear, he just made it impossible to get in. Because every time he got set, Klitschko, Fury would faint him. Faint and faint and faint and faint. And Klitschko could never get set. Which is what you said. And that's yeah. the gift that he has. And he's fighting a great boxer in Usyk. But 
it's not, you know, it's not us, Joshua. You know, Fury is a smart guy. He's waiting. He's patient. He's getting more and more confident. He realized what his name and what he wants to do, his legacy in the fight game, and he wants to prove it. And I feel so proud to have met him and to know him and to watch him fight. I'm talking about, uh, you know, um, um, Fury. Fury. Tyson Fury. And listen, I love that Wilder is making a good comeback. He's got three years left. He's got a lot of big fights out there. And he's going to have to fight somebody in order to get a shot at the title. And I think that Joseph Parker is going to be one of those guys in line. And, uh, and that could be trouble for him. Now, what are your thoughts on AJ? If you were promoting him, if you were his manager, what direction would you set him in? What lane? How, what would you do like, with his career right now? I like that question. And listen, when he fought Usyk, right, you got to tell him in the 10th round when you come back after the ninth round of him getting out boxed because mm -hmm. Joshua was trying to box him. You got to say, forget the plan. Right. You got to get to his ribs. You got to get inside. Stop trying to box the perfect boxer. You got to fight him. Just, okay, forget it. Let's just go get him. And you got to get inside and bang that body, bang that body, and then turn it over, right? Exactly. And then turn it over, slow him down. Get the legs tired from those body shots. We never saw that from Joshua. And uh, it was disappointing for me that he's got, his trainer gets on the television after the fight, and he says, well... We did everything we wanted to, to do. What are you talking about? He's the heavyweight champion of the world. You sometimes, you just got to throw out the plan and fight. Yeah, yeah. So, so now Joshua has another trainer. Derek James, it looks like, is going to be his trainer. Do you think that's going to help Joshua, or do you think mentally he's broken? I, I kind of think he's done, honestly. I think he's broken, too. I think he made a lot of money, God bless him. And, you know, I don't know who that trainer is. I know I could help him. Mm -hmm. I know I could tell him what he's got to do. He's got to build his stamina so he doesn't get tired. He's got to dig in, run work, run the hills, jump boxes, all those things to get his stamina where he can just continually move forward like a Joe Joyce. You know, Jerry, since we're talking about trainers, in, in baseball, I've been extremely critical of how bad – baseball coaches are not just the X's and O's but the training and you mentioned get out of the game plan like a few years ago in the World Series when the Tampa Bay pitcher uh, Snell was doing good against the Dodgers but the game plan before the the, the uh, game was after 75 pitches take him out even though he's doing great so I've been very critical of baseball coaches and I, we've also been very critical about boxing trainers like you mentioned better be ever even Amanda Serrano who I think could be could take less shots. She just stands mm -hmm. there and they hit her. And, and better BF could take less shots. AJ, why aren't they telling him to go to the body more? Why are they, why are they just, are the boxing trainers not as good as the guys you grew up with, like the Dundees Listen. or Victor Valleys or the Eddie Futches and, and so on and so, Georgie Benton, all those guys? Oh, man, that's you talking about Georgie Benton to me. Listen, I love my trainer. He was a great teacher. And unfortunately for me, from my upbringing, I was I was really uh, uh, beaten up from a, a, a rough uh, alcoholic father, and I couldn't hear everything that was taught to me in that moment. I just couldn't get it. And now, as the career's over, I know I've learned I could hear those things he told me. I can build on what he taught me. And unfortunately, all those great trainers, like you talked about, Georgie Benton, you know, uh, you know, all those great guys, they passed. And so boxing's got a watered-down version of, of the training that takes place. Now, some are saying everybody is bad. There's some good people out there. Right. There's some great fighters that have pedigree that are just naturally born with. And uh, like guys like, uh, you know, uh, oh, man, you know, uh, um, those welterweights. Uh, Angelo Dundee. Angelo Dundee. No, not Dundee. The fighters, uh, Jav not Javante. Javante oh, Davis is a great fighter too. Leonard. Uh, what's his name? The, the welterweight. The, the two guys don't want to fight each other. Oh, oh Spence Bob Crawford. Crawford, Errol Spence. Spence Crawford. Two great fighters, pedigrees. They got great talent. They can make the adjustments. They they hear it. They see it. They create it. You know, 
the problem with me in my career is that Don King wouldn't let me fight those guys that I needed so that in those moments, I could create more tools right. to, to understand, have a better understanding of the game. And I got thrown from Norton in with Holmes, and I didn't have the understanding I needed. Okay. Now, in that fight with Holmes, I learned so much. In today's times, I would have had a rematch. Right. But at that time, I didn't. And, you know, we know my story, what happened. But so, listen, uh, guys are getting better. There are great fighters out there. You got to protect yourself. I, I work with kids and people. I tell them, first thing you got to learn is defense. Yes. Second thing is how to punch with your body. Uh, not enough being hit. Everybody's leaning in. They're leaning in with their shots. They're taking shots, head-on collisions they shouldn't have. But hopefully there's going to be somebody else to make those changes. You know, and uh, the fight game is very exciting. Like you said, the women are great. The, 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 the men are even are greater. They're both fantastic right now. Through this pandemic, we have found a way to perform, and we're doing that. Hey, Jerry, this is Smoking Jim. And everybody Thank that you. knows me knows that you're my all-time favorite fighter. I thought uh, between 80 and 81, you were the greatest heavyweight i ever seen. When you were growing up, who inspired you and was one of them, Dwayne Bobbitt? No. Uh, one of those guys was Muhammad Ali. One of those guys was Joe Frazier. One of those guys was um, uh, um, the great middleweight champion, uh, Hagler? Of all Hagler. time. Durant. Durant. Hagler. Durant. No, the Haggard. Those guys, but uh, no. Um, Sugar Ray Sean Robinson. Davis, Sugar Ray Robinson. Mm -hmm. All those great guys that you get to watch and see how they perform. And, you know, I mean, home, Larry Holmes. I remember he came to the gym. I was in, just came out of the pros. It was like, wow. I went up to him and said, I'd love to spar with you sometime. Never thinking I would get that chance. Little did I know I'd be fighting him. Wow. So, yeah, there's been so many great fighters out there in, the, in our times and in the past times that uh, it's so much fun to read about those guys and, you know, the stories that we hear uh, about the past. Uh, it's just phenomenal. All right. Jerry, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come right back with you. So uh, right. come on back to the Boxing Authorities after this quick break. Welcome back. Thank to you, the guys. Welcome back to the Boxing Authorities with our great, great guest and great friend of the show. Love him, Mr. Jerry Cooney. Jerry, has this, you, you mentioned Spence Crawford. Has that fight lost its luster, lost its people, you know, its demand? Because it's been going on. They're going to fight, not going to fight. Your thoughts on that? Well, here's my thoughts, okay? This is the truth. You want to hear the truth? Yes, I'll sir. Say the truth. The boxing fans, the real fans, the hardcore fans, will always watch that fight. But the outside, the majority of people that pay for pay-per-view and bring their kids and their friendships are turned off by it. Because these guys, they're not promoters. You gotta sell yourself. You can't be just turning away from the fight. No, I'm not fighting you. I want this, I want that. Both of them need to go to school to learn how to communicate <laughs> to the real fans, right? Because, you know what? So here's a story. So. If Crawford deserves more, give him more. And then Spence goes out and beats him. Then he gets the pie the next time. They're all stubborn about millions and millions of dollars. They're just throwing away. And the boxing fan and, and the real life, the fans outside of boxing, they, they, they have a struggle in life. You know, for me, when I grew up, I loved watching Joe Lewis. I loved watching those guys fight because they, they got me through the hard times. They made me, sure. the, when I work in two jobs or three jobs, I'm looking forward to Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. Right. If they're going to hem and whore about making another $5 million, when I can't even pay my rent, f*** it, I don't want to even watch it. <laughs> I, 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 I definitely agree That's with right, that. that. That fight should have happened. We thought we were going to get it last December, and then all of a sudden Crawford's fighting another guy we never heard of. But, but who do you blame, Jerry? Do you blame the boxers or do you blame the promoters? I think that those both those guys, uh, Crawford and Spence, they want. I think really, uh, you know, uh, Spence is the guy, the real welterweight champ, and Crawford is a great fighter. He's moved up, done everything, mm -hmm. but he wants more of the pie. He wants his way. 
And, and Spence is saying, oh, no, that, that's not the way it should be. And then the promoters get involved. And then this happens and that happens. And the poor person that's out there that saves his money all year right. to buy that pay-per-view. Right. He's working three jobs and can't wait to come home and watch these guys fight. They're not fighting. So that's, that's, that, that's the fault. That's disappointing. And that's, that's the crime. And we've seen it through history. And uh, I'm sure... We're going to see it again. Listen, Canelo Alvarez, I, I applaud him for fighting Bivol, but there's a lot of other guys in the middleweight division yeah. that merit the fight for him with him, and he's bypassing them. And he's he's taking the kind of listen. I, I listen. He's fought everybody. When he beat Lara, he had so many great fights. Mm -hmm. But uh, and I, I'm proud of him as a fight guy. But there's guys that he could be fighting that he's he's kind of dodging. Right now. One fight that I think we're getting, Ryan Garcia <laughs> versus Tank Davis. That's yeah. a great April fight. 15th, yeah. What do you think about Ryan Garcia? Do you think he's ready for Tank Davis? I know Tank Davis, you know, his situation, his court situation's handled. I guess they'll, they'll have a ruling. What do you Does think that about affect that fight? Him? Does that affect him? Right. His court ruling affect him in his training for this fight? I don't know. I don't think so. I think he's a troubled guy. I think he's a, a aggressive, angry guy yeah. and wants to do whatever he wants to do. And I just think that, that he is going to be too much for Ryan Garcia. I, I think Ryan Garcia is a good kid. He's, a, he's a, a handsome kid. They all love him. He's got like 13 million or 11 million followers and compared to four and a half million followers for... Uh, Twitter, Instagram, all that, all the social media. Tank, yeah. Tank yeah. Davis. Yeah, but I just, I just think that the tough guy is Javon B. Davis, and he will not prevail. As a matter of fact, I, I have a bet with my a partner on Sirius XM. I, by the way, guys, I'm on from Mondays and Fridays from 12 to 2 Eastern time on Channel 156. Okay, um, yes, sir. A bet, a tattoo bet. Oh. A tattoo bet that I'm picking, <laughs> I'm picking Javante Davis because he's too tough. And he will find a way. And, but then I'm saying that to you. And if, uh, uh, you know, Garcia, you know, catches him with one of those left hooks or right hands, he could make him in trouble. Right. But I just think that Javante Davis will not be denied. And, uh, you know, we do know that Ryan Garcia has had some problems. And I, I applaud him <clears throat> for stepping away from the game for a while when he had emotional uh, issues with the pandemic and his career and how fast he was moving up the ladder. And he's worked some of those out, we hope. Right. So there's a lot of, you know, things in this fight, but I just think that uh, Javante Davis will prevail. Jerry, a, a couple things. You talked about pay-per-view and I, 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 there's certain fights, of course, obviously yours and Holmes, pay-per-view. Can I you get hold it. on one second? Can I hold on one second? Yes, sir. I also just want to say about Javante Davis, I think it's a crime what they're letting him get away with. And there has to be consequences for slapping women with closed hands and or running away from car at whatever sure, all those sure. issues. You know, you can look at the list. There's consequences has to be paid. And you can't be having your children come and watch a guy that keeps getting away with doing these horrendous things. And, and so how do we make amends to that? What do we do for that? Right. And that's the, the, the bigger question I that we have to address. I think he's going to get some some jail time. I you think, think so? uh, the judge didn't give him the plea bargain. I think uh, this judge is going to give him some about some time. time. <laughs> well, I mean, they, they they he's been fortunate to have yeah, attorneys that get him out of it. But I mean, he's a, a train wreck. Yeah, he, he has he has, know, he has to tighten up his his, uh, his out of the ring behavior for sure. He's got a great Listen, future I, in front of him. I think Mayweather was great for him. He really kind of got him aside and talked to him, and then he just broke away and. I don't know how that will happen, or why it happened, but Mayweather was a good guy for him, right? And uh, and that he felt he was bigger than Mayweather, and I don't know how that's going to be in the long run. Yeah, but, but he but, can fight. He can fight. Yeah, Mayweather was, but also Mayweather was also making fight announcements when when Tank was having press conference. So there was something there that uh, you know, I, I don't know yeah. how it broke down, but hopefully Tank gets it together. He's on his own now. Right. We'll see what yeah. happens. And I'm sorry for stopping you in your question. No, no, that's you okay. About the, you talked about the Holmes-Cooney fight well, and the magnitude of it. Yeah, again, that fight 
obviously pay-per-view. I'll, I'll take Davis Garcia pay-per-view. But some of these fights that are on pay-per-view, what happened to the uh, CBS, NBC, ABC, USA fights, Tuesday night fights, ESPN? I, I think it's hurting boxing to just do pay-per-view. Now, certain fights are Super Bowl of fights, yes. But not every single fight should be on pay-per-view. Do you agree with that? Unfortunately, I, I do agree with that. But unfortunately, you have like, the platforms like the zone you got these big big companies and top rank has really uh, made good grounds with espn pay-per-view and all those things and they're putting listen i gotta tell you something over the 50 years aram has been the greatest in top rank for all he's done i wish that when i was fighting i had a guy like bob ram who made his guys fight who found the fights and developed them and listen let's look at the guy that just walked away from from Bob Aram. And Berlanga. Bob Aram let him walk. Oh, Berlanga. 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 And, and, and Aram said, we don't think you're ready for those fights you right. need yet. You need some development. Hey, man, that's the guy I want in my corner. I want him to make me work. I want the fight to be harder, but I want to learn from the fight and win. And, you know, listen, he's been in there with his last four fights. These guys, they go in the distance. Listen, if, if you want to go the distance, it's so hard to catch a knockout. Because they're covering up in the heartbeat all the time. The way you got to fight is the real guys. But when it's ready, and, and Aaron was a perfect guy for that, and I don't think what he Belanga did was right for his own career. But we'll have to wait and see. I love him as a fighter. But he's got to learn how to get into those guys that are covering up so well. You got to create the openings. You got to make the sensational shot. You got to still perform at that level. And we didn't see that from them of late, and I hope we do in, in, in the future. But those platforms are making it hard for CBS and ABC and those guys to be able to pay for those fights. Mm -hmm. and, and listen, the quality of fights has gotten better. You know, they're, 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 they are performing. They're, you know, they're making peace with each other, and they're standing in. Look at the lightweight division. Oh, yeah. You have Haney and so many guys, I mean, Look at Regis Progre at 140, and those guys are moving up there. Uh, you know, uh, who's moving up there? Uh, uh, just Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia guys, is so moving, many. right. Teofimo Lopez is at 140 now as well. It used to be that the heavyweight division ran boxing. Now it's anybody. True. All the divisions, the light, the light heavyweight division, the 54-pound division. There's so many great fighters and so many great fights we're going to see. And I'm, sorry, I'm so excited about that that I'm on Sirius XM and I get to promote and watch these guys and talk to them and see what's really making them tick. Right. right. Now, now, one fight, um, Devin Haney versus uh, Lomachenko. Lomachenko. How do you see that yeah. going? I, I know Lomachenko, I don't think he looked very good against Jermaine Ortiz um, in his yeah. last fight. He looked rusty. How do you see this fight going? Listen, Devin Haney, he is great. I Listen, I'm going to tell you something, okay? Now, the guy that I really love is Shakur Stevenson, too. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah. Oh, yeah. Very and, and I, I just think that Lomachenko is, is getting long in the tooth, right? Yes. He's yes. seen a lot of action. He was so sensational as a fighter. And then, you know, what, uh, what's his name? Um, beat him. Uh, Teofimo Lopez. Teofimo Lopez. I'm sorry I'm having trouble with the names today. That's okay. Uh, Lopez beat him. Uh, and uh, But since then, we've seen the kind of... He's not doing so great. So I think it's a great time. Listen, he's going to give Devin Haney trouble. Right. But Devin Haney is going to learn from that awkwardness and his style and make adjustments that's going to take him to a higher levels in his career. Okay? Uh, th that's what I think about that fight. But, I mean, there's just so many guys that we're going to be seeing in that division, too. I mean, the lightweight division, I try and compare Roberto Duran I, you know, I'm an old guy, right? I try and <laughs> compare Duran with Haney, with Loma Chang, with all those guys, right? And I just think he was too much of a beast. <laughs> that was a, that was a loaded yeah. era, man. That that era, those oh, were yeah. the kings. Well, well, just those guys, Until, Duran, Hagler, Hearns, Leonard. Wow. I don't think anybody would have beaten those guys. Yeah. yeah that you was know, I got to tell you something. Leonard was unbelievable. Yep. He was just unbelievable. And, you know, they Mayweather compares – you know, Mayweather, they, Mayweather said, what do they call him? The best ever or something. Yeah, in the, the best ever, time, yeah. In, in today's time, Ray Leonard 
Tommy Hearns don't stop throwing punches right. and can punch. 15 rounds. I'm with you. We, we had a series here, Jerry, where we had uh, Floyd against versus, and we had him against Sugar Ray. We had him losing. We had him against Duran. We had Floyd losing. We had him against Hearns and Hagler, too. We think, oh, well, at least Luther and I, we think all four of them would have beaten. Oh, no, you two uh, beat No, I thought he beat Hagler. Oh, you thought he would be Hagler. <laughs> I thought those guys were just too much. And like you said, they kept throwing punches. And they were serious fighters. They always came in shape, Same. as did Floyd. But Yeah, the only thing I could tell you that with Floyd, um, it's like Demetrius Andre. I went to see him one time. I was up to Box Holy Fame, and I left at dinner okay. to go and watch him fight. I so loved that guy. And what he does is he gets you in the ring, and he strips you down yeah. of all your strengths. Yeah. And he leaves you standing in the middle of the ring naked. Mm. Like, and you're like, what next? And that's what Floyd Mayweather has the ability to that's do. True. But I think yeah. that Leonard and, and, and Tommy Hearns in their heyday, you know, and Duran, they were just too, they were just like a rolling ball that just, you couldn't slow them down. And I don't know that Mayweather, you saw what uh, Madonna did with, uh, yeah. with uh, Floyd Sorry. Mayweather. But, you know, so listen, he's a great fighter. I really feel so good for what Mayweather did in his lifetime after the game. I thought he was trying to take away from the fight game when he was fighting those guys in Japan and uh, Conor McGregor. He was, you know, putting his fights on when big fights were coming up just to try and um, take away from boxing. But right. anyway, that being said, he's, he's a great promoter, a great fighter, and... Uh, so I'm really glad you got a chance to watch his career, too. Yeah, now, speaking of another great fighter who's turned trainer, Roy Jones Jr., um, how dip, one, how difficult it is to go from a boxer to a trainer, and he's had some difficulty. We saw Chris Eubanks get knocked mm -hmm. out Michael and an upset, and now cracked. Michael Williams in sparring got his jaw broke a week before uh, he was supposed to fight Adrian Broner in the biggest fight of his career. Right. You know, how difficult is the training and what do you think about Roy? I, I just, I don't know. Well, you know, I, I try and think about that and watching those stories and think that he's trying to make another Roy Jones. Right. And you have to build on the guy. You got to build on his ability and you can't make another Roy. There's only one Roy Jones. Right. And he was great in his time until he moved up to heavyweight and tried to come back down and got caught. Right. But so you, you can't. There's no more Roy Jones. He has to develop them in their ability right. and make and be able to be able to make those adjustments. But I don't think he has the experience to do that yet. Okay. Okay. Hey, hey, Jerry. This is Smoking Jim again. This is a family show. We consider you a family. Can you tell us about John Henry and Uncle Charlie? John Henry. John Henry. That was your Charlie. They they called your left hook John Henry and your right cross Uncle Charlie. <laughs> uh, listen, you know what I I loved loved what I did when I was fighting. You know, for a short period of time in your professional career, you have this called tunnel vision, where you can create the opening and you can see the guy and set it up, and then you land the shot, and you just get the smile on your face, and that's the gift. But you have to really take care of it. You have to nurture it. And unfortunately, it only lasts a certain amount of time. And, uh, you know, I got caught up drinking and, you know, whether it was fear or my upbringing or whatever it was, and it kind of took away from my uh, ability. And uh, I regret that today, but hopefully I'll be able to meet some guy on the road and help him take it further than I did. Jerry, Jerry something I, I want to ask you, too. Your definition and or roadmap to success and happiness and overcoming things. Listen, I have the greatest life in the world right now. I, I work with kids. I go to an uh, at-risk kid's home. I help them, take them away from their lives. And I teach them boxing and I teach them how to throw a jab, how to throw the right hand with their body and they smile. And I tell kids, you know, it takes... 117 muscles to smile and they smile and, and you know I, I i have a great family i have a great wife i had a great career did i make mistakes yes i made a lot of mistakes unfortunately 
but I didn't get the tools I needed growing up. So I was the kid that sat in the back of the room, never raised my hands, and I just, out of sight, out of mind, I wouldn't get hurt. I regret that, but that's what happened to me. But on the other hand, with all of that that went on for me, I made it very far up the ladder, and I had some great fights, and I met some great, I met everybody I ever wanted to meet all my life. Mm. And just think about you guys today, which is the biggest, meet you guys today, it's just unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I've been with, with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, I've been with uh, Jack Nicholson, Man. you know, Bob Hope, uh, you name it, everybody Legends. at a party. For, for Larry Holmes and myself, those kind of gifts have just been great. And my children, have a, they're all in college. They, they know how to fight. They're both punchers. Three of them are both punch. Three of them can punch, but they don't have to fight today. And, and uh, those are gifts that we give out. And I get to, I tell people all the time, I, they call me and they, they invite me to events. I go, I give everybody a hard time. At the end of the night, they pay me. And they say, Jerry, will you come back next year? <laughs> you know, how do you beat that? That's right. <laughs> so I'm a lucky guy. What, what, I want to get one more question about training. Um, and we see a lot of fathers um, in the corner. Uh, Tiafimo Lopez, you know, his dad is in his corner. Bill Haney is in there with Devin uh, Haney. Um, but uh, we've also seen fighters leave their dad, like Floyd Mayweather and Roy Jones. What do you think about that dynamic? And, um, you know, do you think there's a time to leave or do you think they should stay with their dad, in your opinion? You know, communication is everything. Mm -hmm. I have to communicate what I'm feeling. What am I getting? What's going on for me? And if I'm not getting it, this career is very short that we live in. Right. And maybe you see somebody else that you think maybe they can help me in this area where I'm not being helped. You have to, your, your father has to respect that. And I think in some ways, people don't break away, and that's uh, hurtful to their careers. So, I mean, it's a fine line. It's a fine line. And you have to make, it's your career. Right. You have to have the courage to say, listen, Dad, you got to step away. You've got to give me this break. <clears throat> give me a chance. You have to let me try something different. And that's growing up. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the parent has to respect that. In, in, not not right away, but when the dust settles, they'll say, "Well, you know what? That was a great decision he made, and it, it was helpful to him." Right, and like I say that because I, I look at Tiafimo Lopez. I was really <laughs> high on him, and since he's moved up to 140, I haven't seen any growth. I, actually, I've seen him go backwards, and I really think he needs another trainer. Um, I, I don't think he's getting better, and if he does fight Jack Taylor, I see him getting knocked out. Listen, I got to tell you something. I was at his training camp two times or three times a week okay. when he was going to fight Lomachenko. And I thought, wow, this guy's got his hands full. Right. I saw four great champions quit in the corner Wow. with Lomachenko. And I'm thinking, this guy, you know, he was having a hard time. Everybody's giving him a, a hard time. He feels lousy. I said, listen, do yourself a favor. Every Wednesday from 1 to 2, feel lousy. Feel lousy about yourself. And then get back to life and get mm. back to training. And he went out there and he beat Lomachenko at his own game. Right. And I really admired that about him. And I thought that, wow, I'm going to see some great things in this guy. And then from that experience, he seemed to go on downhill. Yeah. And yeah. it's not the same guy. And He's not. he is so talented and so powerful. But you got to have somebody directing you how to make it happen. And sometimes uh, it's time to turn the page. And the father should, could say, well, okay, kid, maybe try here. Do this lesson. And um, we're not seeing that. So, And we're not seeing that magic that we no, need not. to see from him. Jerry, last question for you. And this is something we talk about on the show all the time. We knew Jerry Cooney in the background. We knew Sugar Ray Leonard in the background. We knew everybody, Boom Boom Mancini and Donnie Lalonde and so on and so forth. I think in today's world with all the social media – we don't know who these guys are. We don't know. I don't know if fans can root for the person who's fighting in the ring as opposed to the guy who's fighting in a ring. Do you agree with that? And if you do, what can these fighters do to let people know their stories so people can root for them, watch them, and, and buy their pay-per-views? Great question. Let me tell you something. We're getting old. 
it's new generations of golf. New <laughs> generations, there's new technology. They don't do what we do. It's a different world. Look at this guy came out and he's a, a, a what's his name? Uh, Jake Paul. Oh, Jake Paul, yeah. Jake Paul and his brother. And they have ability. They have ability. To, they have got good teachers in their corners. Look what they did. I don't understand that. <laughs> I, they're making millions and millions of dollars fighting broke down guys. Right. So, <laughs> listen, it's, it's, it's a different world. We have to grow to it. True. We have to accept this. And listen, uh, obviously, you know, we're never going to think that, uh, you know, the, the, the guys of today are better than the guys of yesterday. Right. Um, but, uh, and some of them are, but, you know, it's a different time. And we have to, we have to grow with the times. We have to grow with the times. And yes, I feel it's more difficult to learn. I'm in the, I'm in, I'm on the, I'm on the radio. I'm a radio host, you know. You can see I got that radio face, right? No, you look good. You look, <laughs> you look good. So, so I'm learn. I have to learn about these. I tell everybody, put on ESPN on your boxing on your on your website right. and look over some of the stories. We have to get reacquainted with the game again. You know, it got, you know, during the King eras and different things, it, people got walked away from it. The, not the core boxing people, but the outside people walked away from the game. And so they're coming back. We have to, they have to get to know the game. You got to go on ESPN. You got to read different stories, different about the fighters and learn about them. And that's a fault. And guys like Crawford and, and Errol Spence, they're not helping that cause. And one thing that's really helped is that there's no more mismatches, really. Boxing had to catch up to MMA and to those different. Uh, fight organizations, and they had to put better fights on, and we're seeing better fights. Yeah, and that's I, I like to see that. So right. it's pretty exciting time in boxing, and I hope it keeps growing. And we got to get on Instagram and Facebook and those <laughs> other sites that. that can help yeah. us. To, you know what I mean? Well, Jerry, you know what? You know I love you to death, and we appreciate you being on the show. After we get done talking to you, after anybody leaves your presence, they always feel better. You are the best, and uh, we want you on as many times as you want to come on, but we appreciate you. And thank you, Mrs. Cooney, thank for setting you. this right, up. Right, right. <laughs> I'm not telling her. I did it. I'm not telling <laughs> you did it. Her. <laughs> now, I'll tell you something. There's been, uh, there's, uh, when I made a decision with my wife years ago that I make all the major decisions and she makes all the small decisions, right? Right. In 30 years we've been together, there has never been any big decisions. <laughs> <laughs> There's only small decisions. <laughs> Listen, guys, I, I want you guys to be a favor. Can you send this to my email? Yes. Y yes, yeah, we'll send this link it. to you. I want to promote it. And listen, I love being with you guys. You guys really ask great questions. And listen, this is a great life we're in. Great yes. life. Keep fighting for that. Keep talking the good word, right? Keep yes, pushing. Sir. That's what we need to do today. So thank you, guys. Jerry, thank you. thank you. You're the best. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you for everything. See you. Thank All you. right, bye-bye. Okay, everyone, I know we hope you enjoyed that as much as we did. Jerry's the best, as yes, I said in the outset. So as always, we hope you enjoy our show as much as we enjoy bringing it to you. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Boxing Authorities.